Hello friends, this is Christopher David Shannon and today I want to talk to you about one of the most magnificent tools in our strumming toolbox, the thumb. Now those of you that watch my channel or have taken lessons from me at all know that I start all of my beginners off with the index finger strum and there's a very good reason for that. The index finger strum is a better foundational strum because it sets our hands up to do a lot of other motions. I can't do that with my thumb. Um, and the other issue with just thumb strumming and the specific reason that I do not teach it to beginners at first is that eventually we need to play on off beats. We need to play not down strums. And when we do a down strum instinctively with our thumb, we're going to use the pad of our finger, right? Our up strum would be the nail of our thumb. And that just doesn't sound very good. And we're going to talk a little bit later in this video about how to get around that issue. But the first thing is we just need to, you know, figure out how to just nicely strum with our thumb. And actually this isn't that much different than your index finger strum. All this motion is still coming right here from the wrist. We're keeping our hand nice and relaxed and our thumb is going to be nice and loose, just like the index finger is when we strum. We're not actively pushing through at the moment with the thumb. We're just letting it touch the strings nice and loosely coming from the wrist here. And let's do just a, a one, six, two, five um, in the key of F. So we're going to play F, D minor seventh, G minor seventh, C seventh, whichever C seventh you feel like playing. Um, and we can just do four down strums on this. And, and listen to just how this is such a great textural change from index finger strumming. We just have this softness of the instrument. So it'll sound like this, just two beats on each chord. Two, three, four. Just repeat it. And that's just the basic thumb strum. That's our foundation that we can build the rest of this off of. So let's look at how we can accentuate certain chords using the thumb strum now. One of the great things about the thumb is we actually have more control over it than the index finger because we're plucking down instead of up when we pluck with the thumb, which is a much more natural motion. So one thing that I like to do is do little arpeggios in ballads to just help push the, uh, the harmony forward. So it sounds something like this with our same progression. So what's the difference here? What am I actually doing? There's two things. So the first bit is that while I just told you in the previous segment not to have any tension in your thumb, when we do this, we are actively going to resist the strings. We're going to just carry a little tension in our thumb, dig in a little bit more. And the other thing that you can do is actually just not hold your uke like this, but just brace it lightly down here. And that's going to just help us because we're actually following through with the thumb now physically instead of the whole motion coming from the wrist. So if you watch, it'll look a little bit something like this if we accentuate every other chord. So we can use that, that slow thumb movement and just be a little bit more aggressive about it to pull out these arpeggios. And this is very much the same manner you would use to pick individual notes with the thumb as well. Now, the final question we need to answer is, how do we play an upbeat? So as I discussed earlier, it doesn't really make much sense to come up with the thumb in most contexts because the nail is going to give us such a brash sound. Now, of course, there are plenty of times we do this, and it's because we want that specific sound. You can think of Loke Lani by Ernest Cailly. He starts out with this. It's a very specific sound that he's making there. In general practice, we usually don't want that strong sound. So if we're playing just our basic progression, our F, D minor, we can accentuate some of those beats. Ooh, 
Ooh, so what am I doing there? All we're doing is we're not using the thumb. We're going to use the pad of our index finger. If we think about our index finger strum coming up, it's nice and soft because we use the pad. So we're going to do the same thing. And the great part about this is that you don't need much motion because we're not doing down and up strums really fully now. We're actually separating the down and up strums into two separate parts. So what if we just put, let's, let's think of this as just like a ride cymbal pattern. So we'll put it on the end of four. So up, down, down down, down, up, down, 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 up. So if you ever record, it'll look like this. And note, with my first finger, I'm not worried about hitting all the strings. I'm just lightly gracing. This is, this is just really just almost like a ghost note in there. It's a rhythmic pattern more than it is a harmonic pattern. And same thing with the thumb. On the strums where you're not doing this, if you don't hit all four of your strings, that's okay, because in a second, you're gonna fill out the harmony by using the first finger. It'll sound a little bit something like this. So it'll be. So we can just add in these little rhythmic elements, and obviously you can use that for any little bit that you want. Um, and this is great to start with strumming, and then if you get into Kimo Hussey's work, you can see that he uses very similar techniques to provide chords and an accompaniment to single note lines as well with the first finger, which is something we'll delve into shortly. I hope you all have enjoyed this. I'll see you next week.